Momentum may be growing in Washington for action on gun legislation. A bipartisan group of senators has been negotiating to find common ground on measures to curb gun violence. Scott McFarland has the latest from Capitol Hill. With some progress among Senate negotiators over gun laws, President Biden today but said he would soon get involved. I'll do what I can to try to see if we have some real progress. The president laid out a series of proposals Thursday, including a ban on assault weapons and high-capacity magazines. How much more carnage are we willing to accept? But in a narrowly divided U.S. Senate where 60 votes and both parties support are needed, many of the president's proposals aren't on the table. Assault weapon ban, raising the minimum age, is that on the table in your conversations? Right now, there aren't the votes in the Senate to ban assault weapons, but there may be the votes in the Senate to be able to expand our background check system, to um, help states pass red flag laws um, for additional mental health funding. As negotiations continue, so does the violence. Two mass shootings a day since the attack in Texas, and the frustration continues too. Keep our schools safe! With student walkouts nationwide from Maryland to California, protesting inaction by Congress. This week, House Republicans stated their opposition to most gun reform proposals. Democrats today and this administration have indicated clearly that they desire to take away guns of law-abiding citizens. Some in the GOP do back hardening school security. In Little Falls, New Jersey, officers walk the halls, but kids admit they're still worried. It's uh, crazy to know that when I come into school every day, I'm lucky that I get to, to come home. I think that's not something that I should be feeling. And Scott McFarland joins me now with more. So, Scott, what is the latest on these gun safety negotiations and how much of President Biden's agenda seems realistic at this point? Elaine, the big players in this negotiation and the advocates for gun control say a lot of things have to move in a short period of time. Hopefully next week, according to Senator Chris Murphy, there'll be some proposal on the table to work with. They want to move swiftly because with legislation in Washington, the longer it stays out there, the more time is consumed getting to it, the more likely it is to get derailed or simply atrophy. So we use that as our starting point. How much did President Biden move the ball down the field? That's not clear, but I could say before he spoke last night and at the outset of his speech last night, here at the Capitol, the U.S. House Judiciary Committee was approving on a party line vote a set of sweeping gun control reforms, which mirrored what he talked about, but which have no chance at the necessary 60 votes, Elaine, here in the U.S. Senate. All right, we'll continue to watch that. On another topic, a grand jury has indicted former Trump White House aide Peter Navarro on two counts of contempt of Congress. He spoke to reporters outside U.S. District Court on Friday. Let's listen to that. These are ultra-virus, unenforceable, unlawful subpoenas, and that committee uh, should never have been formed. I blame, as, as much as I blame Pelosi and Schiff, and Raskin. I also blame Kevin McCarthy. Scott, what more can you tell us about his arrest and his criticism against House Minority Leader McCarthy? He was arrested at Reagan National Airport outside Washington, D.C. today. It processed and had his initial appearance in D.C. federal court on this contempt of Congress charge. When you heard him speaking, he was standing outside the courthouse. He has made the argument previously in media interviews and in a civil suit he filed earlier this week against the January 6th committee that the committee is not properly authorized or composed to do its work, that Kevin McCarthy's choices for the committee weren't seated, that Nancy Pelosi chose and seated the two Republicans who are on the committee, Trump critics Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. So Mr. Navarro is arguing this committee is not lawful or proper, and he is arguing there that Kevin McCarthy needed to do more to stop it, block it, or protest it. He's back in court June 17th, and it's worth underscoring, Elaine, he is now one of two Trump World Inner Circle members charged with contempt of Congress. Steve Bannon is set to go on trial on his charges in July. You mentioned Liz Cheney, the Wyoming Congresswoman, is the vice chair of the House Select Committee investigating the attack on the Capitol. In an interview to be broadcast on CBS Sunday morning, Cheney talked about the state of the Republican Party today. Let's listen. We have too many people now in the Republican Party who are not taking their responsibility seriously and who have pledged their allegiance and loyalty to Donald Trump. I mean, it is, it is fundamentally 
antithetical. It is, it is contrary to everything conservatives believe to embrace a personality cult. And yet, that is what so many in my party are doing today. We'll hear more of that interview this weekend. But, Scott, what do you make of Congresswoman Cheney's remarks, and how could that impact the GOP going into the midterm elections? We haven't seen members of the Republican Party suffer politically for defending what happened here on January 6th. And I mean minimizing the insurrection and calling what it was a protest and saying that the investigation of January 6th is a quote-unquote witch hunt. The members of the Republican conference who do that, who defy and say that what happened that day was a protest, have benefited politically in many cases since then. So a year and a half later, we haven't seen members of Congress take heat for continuing to side with Donald Trump in efforts to claim the 2020 elections were fraud. Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, the two Republicans who are on this select committee, have had political hits. Ms. Cheney has a primary coming later this summer. It's going to be a contested primary. It's going to be an uphill fight for her. Adam Kinzinger has simply retired. He's leaving Congress at the end of this term. So that's the political reality with five months to go till the midterm elections and six days to go till this first public hearing. All right, Scott McFarlane on Capitol Hill for us. Scott, thank you.